Corrie ten Boom has this quote. She says, if the devil can't make you bad, he will make you busy. And the essence behind that idea is that being busy or being bad, being in sin, have the exact same effect on our relationship with God. And so the question is, how do we address busyness uh, without falling off the deep end or without going the other direction? listening to the Midweek Redemption Podcast, a resource from Redemption City Church in Grand Rapids, Michigan. For more information about our church, please visit our website at redemptiongr.org. Hey, church family. It's Josh on the Midweek Redemption Podcast. I'm thankful to be here, encouraged by our elder meeting this morning. Got some great guys that love and serve this church, and uh, and it was great. I was honored to be uh, at the table with them, the metaphorical table over Zoom, of course, about you know what the heck it means to prepare a budget in the midst of uh, the chaos of these times. Uh, but I'm recording this on Wednesday. Uh, And if you're joining us in our pandemic rule of life uh, and fasting with us today, I hope that's going well for you. Uh, I have to be honest, um, it's kind of been tricky uh, for me. We had a a teething baby last night that didn't sleep, and so I feel like I'm uh, kind of sleeping one down. And then coming off the holiday weekend uh, where I was just kind of feasting so much, I feel like it's been a little bit of a a hard shift. Uh, My body's used to being all full and content and cozy and stuff, but it's been good. Just the physical reset and just seeing all the ways I go to food uh, and for comfort and distraction instead of my father has been good. And we had a good uh, midday prayer time uh, with a few folks uh, earlier today. So, uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, and today we're going to continue talking about our uh, pandemic rule of life. And uh, and as, and this is all kind of fit, fits in pretty nicely with our theory of transformation, like how we actually become like Jesus, uh, where we we have teaching and truth uh, combined with uh, practices and community empowered by the Holy Spirit. And uh, today we're going to talk about the next discipline in our uh, PRL, Pandemic Rule of Life, uh, and that's the the spiritual practice of Sabbath. Um, it's one of my favorite topics. It was hard to kind of whittle this down. Uh, and I thought today, uh, uh, this will be released tomorrow on Thursday, uh, you know, is a good time to talk about Sabbath because typically someday between Friday and Sunday is the best space to practice the Sabbath. We kind of enter the weekend, uh, the first weekend of our PRL. I thought this could be helpful. Uh, and if you're like me, uh, it, Sabbath was a totally new concept. Uh, I, I didn't grow up with it uh, re- real clearly or specifically except for like chariots of fire with the guy not running on Sunday for some reason or something. But uh, anyways, very simply, to define Sabbath, uh, it is a 24-hour period where we do four things. We stop, we rest, we delight, and we worship. We stop uh, from the jobs that we're paid to do or even the unpaid work, you know, just being a human, laundry, cooking, all that stuff. Uh, and we rest, uh, we delight in the good things of God has given us and we worship God himself um well, four things is a lot to remember but I think all four of those things are crucial uh, to kind of fully get the sabbath uh, but sabbath uh, if you hear nothing else sabbath is meant to be a gift to you it's meant to be good news man was not made for the sabbath but sabbath was made for man uh, but there is a lot of debate uh, around the degree of weight uh, that sabbath should carry uh, unlike fasting Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath, that's uh, number four on the Big Ten. <laughs> that's number. That's the fourth commandment of the Ten Commandments. Uh, it's kind of surprising uh, because you know it's got it's like right there with like worshiping God alone and not murder or stealing or adultery or whatever. And like right there in the middle is keep the Sabbath holy. And I, I rarely hear people in church brag about committing adultery or stealing or murdering, but I feel like I almost always talk with people about how busy they are or like, you know, not having a day off or, you know, all this stuff. And, uh, and of course, you know, talking about busyness, it comes across like a complaint, but you know, let's be real. Like there's, there's something gratifying or like a little bit of a badge of honor 
that we can experience when we talk about how important we are, or how many demands are on our lives, or or all the fun things that we do, or all the different places that we can go. Um, and I mean, I feel like that's kind of the standard reply. Hey, how was your week? How was your day? Busy. Uh, but Corey Tin Boom said, if the devil can't make you bad, he'll make you busy. Uh, and the the idea behind that is that busyness and like sin have the same net effect on our souls, on our spiritual life. They cut us off from deep fellowship with God, our Father. And statistically, we in the U.S. work more on average than almost any other country. If you look at like hours per year, there's hundreds and hundreds of hours that we in the U.S. on average work more than Japan, the U.K., Germany, and the list goes on and on. So it feels like we're in this space uh, culturally and just like in our day and day and age where we have uh, on one on the one hand we have some pretty weighty biblical realities of the Sabbath and being in the Ten Commandments and. And then, and on the other hand, the culture, like the air we breathe, if we are fish, the water that we swim in is just one of busyness, almost like as a badge of honor. Uh, so there's, there's a little bit of, a little bit of tension there and, um, to look at. And I, and I, I wouldn't come out and say, you know, like Sab- keeping the Sabbath is a command. Like you can't go to heaven if you're like openly not keeping the Sabbath or unrepentantly keeping the Sabbath or anything like that. Like th- there's a whole lot we could talk about with like how we understand the co- commandments and the Old Testament law in general, and and then how the New Testament talks about the Ten Commandments, and because the Sabbath is addressed a little bit different differently in the New Testament compared to the way the New Testament mentions the other nine commandments. So there's there's some discussion there if you want to get real nerdy and deep but i think we should give sabbath a decent amount of weight and i just want to kind of dive into a little bit of the scriptural the biblical basis or the biblical reality of of sabbath um and some ways of like keeping the sabbath as a spiritual practice versus you know just kind of working until we crash and then you know Netflix binge while we get caught up on housework. So first, listen to this. Uh, This is Genesis 2, verses 1 through 2. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, and so he rested from all his work. Guys, do you hear that? Like We know this passage so familiar, we can kind of miss miss it. God rested. This is just mind-blowing. God rested. I mean, what could we possibly say to that? Like, what situation, what life circumstance would trump this? Like, oh, you don't understand. You don't. You don't remember what it's like to have little kids. God rested. No, you don't understand. Like, I'm an executive, or I run my own business, and I have to keep going. I got to do. God rested. Well, you know, just I'm kind of wired, just more like a task oriented doer person. You know, I'm and I'm extroverted, and and God rested. Or to maybe hit too close to home for me, like, yeah, I can't rest because, you know, I'm a pastor and all these people depend on me for all these different things. And God rested. I mean, consider everything that's on God's plate. He created everything and he sustains everything. And yet he rested. Now, it'd be super fun. Take a deep dive into what the Hebrew word for rest here means. It's it's Shabbat uh, in Hebrew and how that concept plays out in the Old Testament. But suffice it to say that God uh, uh, Shabbat, he, he rested uh, not because he was tired or burnt out uh, or he just crashed after the six days of creation, uh, but rather uh, this word brings to mind that feeling you get uh, maybe on the first warm Saturday in the springtime where you're outside working on your yard, cleaning up from the winter, planting flowers, spreading mulch, getting your garden going, mowing the lawn for the first time, making it all crispy and green. And, and then at the end of the day, as the sun sets, you sit down on the porch and you stop. And you look out over all that you've done and, and you rest and you're satisfied. Genesis 2 verse 3 says, the next verse says, God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. God bless the seven day, seventh, seventh day, and what we see him doing is weaving into the fabric of the universe this rhythm of work and rest, six and one, six days of work, one day of rest. And that's, the, that's a key idea regarding the Sabbath, is that it comes from the creation order, from the way God designed the world to function. This is pre-sin, before the fall of creation, 
there was rest. Rest and Sabbath is not a result of like sin and weakness or something like that. No, there was, it was there. Rest, uh, Shabbat was there in the perfect creation order. Six days of work, one day of rest is just reality. It's like God's, it's like gravity. Like God has woven this into the very core of what it means to be human. History and research prove this. The last time there was a widespread effort to change the six-in-one rhythm was during the the French Revolution, where they tried to move to a 10-day work week to be more productive. And it was a disaster, like suicide and mental illness went through the roof. And actually, society became less productive despite fewer days off. And on a weekly level, study after study shows that human productivity and work quality pretty much drops off a cliff after 55 hours, which is what? Six days of work, roughly. That means even for all our bravado and beating our chest about an eight-hour work week, the odds are that the 80-hour work week or 90, you know, whatever you're bragging about, uh, you know, the odds are is that 25 to 30 of those hours contributed very little to our productivity This is the idea behind, you know, some of the trendy stuff out there in like the business, like uh, strategy world or whatever, like Cal Newport's deep work concept, uh, where he, a fascinating little book where, you know, he talks about how much more he can produce on fewer hours than most of his colleagues because he rests and then he works really hard and is focused doing deep work. And because this six in one rhythm is so deeply ingrained in the universe, uh, I think we we neglect it to our own peril, like like if we were to neglect the reality of gravity and, and or something. Like uh, some uh, reading, some pastors I've heard will say, Sabbath will come for you one way or the other. Either we rest intentionally to stop delight and worship, or we will be forced to stop by illness or burnout or mental breakdown or you know some major like relational dysfunction or something. Whereas on the flip side, studies show, and this is crazy, this is weird, uh, the Seventh-day Adventists, which is a, a sect, arguably a cult, who are majorly into the Sabbath, uh, they on average live 11 years longer than the average, the average lifespan, which is generally how long 80 years of weekly Sabbath adds up to. It's, of course, you know, difficult to prove causation here. Uh, There seems to be a pretty clear correlation. But it's just like it's super interesting to consider that, like, is it true that for every day we Sabbath, we might get that kind of added back to us? Now, there's a lot more we could say about the biblical reality of uh, the Sabbath. And if you're interested in that, email me and we maybe do more episodes. Get old Andrew Panaggio on here, Old Testament scholar and unpack Shabbat and all that. But I hope uh, that is enough to pique your interest. And for now, I want to get into some practical aspects and disclaimers about keeping the the uh, the Sabbath here. Uh, the first one, the uh, first kind of disclaimer, let me just say what the Sabbath is not. The Sabbath is not the only error that we can fall into as humans. Uh, Sabbath stems from the six-in-one rhythm, six days of work, that and one day of rest. That's the ratio woven into the fabric of the universe. Sabbath, Sabbath is no by no means like against work or using your gifts or joining God in the work of, of redemption uh, or enjoying work even. I think Sabbath makes us enjoy work way more. A theology of work is just as crucial as a theology of rest. So if you're hearing this stuff about the Sabbath and you're like, but, 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 you know, we got to work. It's good to work. We got to use your gifts. Like you are absolutely right. Uh, and if you're not working, uh, if your your ratio is more like three and three or, or reversed even, uh, you know, you're not being faithful to work or contributing to society or, you know, working with your hands so you have something to offer those in need, uh, as scripture says, uh, do not use the Sabbath as an excuse uh, to not get off your butt and do something. But honestly, I don't think any of you people like that uh, out there, like I haven't met any of that second type of person at Redemption City. Uh, the second thing uh, the Sabbath is not is Sabbath is not just a day off, a day where you, you know, just don't go into the office or just maybe don't go down to, you know, if you're working from home, like the basement or whatever, you might rake some leaves, pay some bills, maybe like check your work email on your phone, watch a movie, get caught up on laundry, maybe check into Slack, uh, your Slack work channels or something like that. That's a, that's a day off where you're not like on, on for work or something like that. Uh, 
Eugene Peterson calls this, and excuse the language, he calls that a bastard Sabbath. Uh, it's kind of rest, it's kind of work, there's not any real clear intention uh, to quiet our hearts and minds and enjoy God and his world. Which brings me to the first practical thing. Uh, if you are going to Sabbath, it will require you uh, to a lot of intentionality. It will require you to live the other six days differently. If you're going to Sabbath, it's going to require you uh, to live the other six days differently. Sp- specifically, uh, the, your day off of work that is not your Sabbath. You know, like if you're Sabbathing on Sunday, you know, Saturday is like a, a day off, but it's not your Sabbath or whatever. What I'm saying is this. You will probably have to do less the other days and figure out time to do the, the real, necessary, inescapable work of laundry and mowing the lawn and house repair and paying bills and, you know, talking finances with your spouse and cooking food and, you know, all that stuff. And that's why it's really great that we have a five-day work week with most of our jobs. Uh, That's good. That means we can use one non-job day to get stuff done, you know, just the stuff of life and still be able to Sabbath. Or to say it another way, uh, we, we typically can't just effortlessly stumble into a meaningful Sabbath. Sabbath takes preparation. In Jewish tradition, uh, they Sabbath from Friday night to Saturday night. And Friday, they call the day of preparation. Like you see that phrase used around scripture. Uh, And the day of preparation was space that everyone, uh, because everybody's Sabbath, had to prepare to, to do the stuff they had to do in order to be able to fully and truly rest. It was prepping food, getting work done, responding to needs as much as possible because when the sun set on Friday, boom, Shabbat Shalom, it is time to rest. So as you consider the practice of Sabbath uh, with your spouse or your friends or roommate, community group friends or whatever, uh, you got to consider what you need to do in order to really be able to fully rest and enjoy is respond to emails, pay bills, return phone calls, schedule hangouts for your Sabbath, pre- maybe prep food, uh, figure out, you know, or, or, you know, figure out where you're going to eat or whatever, clean up the house, laundry, you know, chores that would make the Sabbath more relaxing if they were done. At one point, uh, as Kimon and I have tried to practice Sabbath, uh, we actually had a Sabbath preparation list, like to-do list, hanging on our fridge like every week so we could kind of both be on the same page as we got closer to the Sabbath. Uh, so there's a lot of freedom if you just like, can we all just be on the same page? Like in order to Sabbath, in order to have a one day that's like fully devoted to stopping uh, resting, delighting, and worshiping. Um, it's going to require some like some effort, some planning, and stuff like that, um, and uh, cause us to live the other six days uh, differently. Uh, but the odds are, even with a lot of preparation time, there will still be things that just don't get done. And I would just encourage you to let them go. Like God's in control. Let the Sabbath, you know, carry some weight and adjust your doing to the Sabbath, and not the Sabbath to your doing. And that brings me to the second practical thing is you you, you got to explore a 24-hour period that you think will work for you uh, to Sabbath. Uh, I'd encourage you to try a, a, a rhythm of uh, Sabbathing from like sundown to sundown. Um, that's, uh, that's not only the traditional way, but it's also really practical. It gives you some space on each day to take care of stuff. So like, you know, if you were to uh, prep Saturday during the day and then sundown Saturday, uh, you know, start Shabbat uh, and all the way to like sundown on Sunday evening, then, you know, you could prep on Saturday and get some stuff done. And then Sunday evening, you could kind of come back online and, you know, prep for the week or something like that. So it's just like a helpful way to do it. But maybe, you know, doing all day Sunday would be best for you. Uh, That's also super nice where you're just like totally, you know, off grid for an entire day. Uh, Or maybe, you know, if you have shift work or something, it might have to change each week, which might you know, just create some more, you know, preparation or, or scheduling or something. You might have to flex in different seasons based on jobs or kids. Uh, but I encourage you to, you know, pick a 24-hour window. And uh, that, that's kind of the reach, you know, uh, the, the reach goal for this practice. You know, if you need to start with just like maybe a six-hour window, like, hey, on Saturday night, we're going to unplug and light some candles and have a good meal and, uh, and, and, and do the delighting and rest and worship, then that's great too. Uh, and just consider what it would look like to do the kind of full 24-hour window. The third practical thing is to think like a kid. Uh, th- this is kind of like, you're like, what do I do on the Sabbath? Uh, this is the kind of the grid or the filter uh, th- is think like a kid. Like what makes you feel young and free and joyful? 
like you know, like a kid playing in the sandbox or something? Like, is it taking a nap or going for a hike or something like that? Like for me, since I work in an office, I really like to find some like non-mandatory like elective project I could do with my hands where I can just be like fully like present and engaged and you know building something or making something like this past week I started building like a, a busy board for my kiddos because you know it, it, whether I got it done or not you know didn't really matter you know I wasn't like unclogging a toilet or doing something really pressing and, and I, I had a friend lend me a table saw and it was just like super fun to like play around with the table saw um, so you know something like that and for Camille and I we discovered that uh, most Sabbaths we don't like to cook like we really like food and we do like to cook generally uh, but we've had Sabbaths where we just like are cooking all our favorite dishes all day and then it's just kind of like always in the kitchen and it's just this mountain of dishes and it was just like less than what we were going for and stuff. And um, and so uh, we really like the feeling of like just not cooking and having our food handed to us. So we either, you know, prep food ahead of time um, or have, you know, like yummy cereal, like treat cereal or something uh, or, or order out. Like over the first quarantine, we budgeted to get the... Uh, delicious like sunday chicken dinner uh from sovengard every sunday and and it, and it was awesome it made us feel like kings um uh, and but you know i know cook, cooking can be fun for folks like taking taking your time in the kitchen and cooking up a great meal uh that you wouldn't cook normally or normally don't have time to cook and then eating it to the delicious glory of god like that's that's great you know you just gotta uh, uh practice you know, it takes a lot of practice to, to learn to Sabbath well. And that, and the, the key is to just pay attention to your soul. Like what, what enables you to feel light and free to be able to delight and rest and be present to God in your body, uh, to, to those around you. The last practical thing I will say is to consider turning off your phone for the Sabbath. I just think very few things work against our ability to be present, to be unstressed, unhurried like our phones. Uh, that might take some preparation, you know, to like let people know you're not going to be responding, you know, print out recipes or directions or schedule things with your friends before. So you're not like texting, you know, details all day, the day of your Sabbath or order food ahead of time or whatever. But in my experience, it's like unbelievably freeing uh, and nothing makes me feel more like a kid than being phoneless uh, and just contentedly present to your life and to God uh, and for for 24 hours sabbath is a gift it's made for us it's modeled for us by god himself and i believe it has so much good treasure to offer our souls Uh, but just give yourself lots of space and grace to practice it Um, in my experience it's actually pretty hard to do Uh, you know if we haven't really thought like what do i like to do for fun for a few years or if we're addicted to busyness you know like we feel safe in our busyness and so to stop kind of brings stuff to the surface or we might be addicted to our phones uh we didn't know know we were so give yourself lots of time if you try something on a sabbath and it doesn't work out you know don't worry there's another sabbath coming in six days so just try again um just pick it up the next week and of course the classic parenting disclaimer you know parents of kids especially young kids make sabbath very tricky you know you can't just like tell them to not eat or soil their diapers because you're sabbathing uh unfortunately you know so just do your best uh ask for help from other people to get breaks maybe you know spouses can give each other breaks if you can uh and just enjoy it. and then other than that you know just try to enjoy unhurried time with those precious little sabbath killing blessings that god has given you Listen, I would love to hear uh, about what you guys come up with. I would tell you to take a picture of it, but you know, don't have your phone on. Just tell me about it uh, as you Sabbath, just like fun things that you find uh, to do. So, yeah, please email me and let me know how it goes or if you have any pushback or other practical questions, I would love to hear. Uh, but I think the Sabbath practice for our church and the kind of the culture of Redemption City uh, could be a, a really beautiful thing uh, to kind of slow us down, uh, to, to show us that we can rest, to show us that God's in control, to kind of live out the uh, the sovereignty of God that we love uh, so dearly. Uh, so that's what I got for today. Uh, again, love to hear from you. Hope you have a, a great uh, a great weekend and uh, find time to have a Sabbath and uh, just experience Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.